Now let's talk a little bit about the plugins. If I go to U Universal Audio here, you're going to see that we literally have hundreds of titles of plugins. Um, you know, uh, bass amps, AMS reverbs, um, auto tune, the API stuff, um, Brainworks plugins, Brainworks. There's other companies that have partnered with us and started running their plugins on our platform. Yeah, like the Chandler Curve Bender. You know, this is about a $4,500 equalizer if you bought it in hardware. This is what Tony Maserati uses on his mix bus for all of his records. Um, Michael Brower as well, I think, is using this on his mix bus. Uh, the hardware version, these guys can afford the hardware. Um, but we've brought that to, or SoftTube has brought that to the platform um, for UA. And so this is a really stellar mix bus equalizer. Uh, Ryan Hewitt uses this as well um, on his mix bus. Uh, let's see, what are some of the other highlights? So also from Chandler, the Xenier limiter. Um, you know, this is an Abbey Road style uh, EMI limiter. Um, you know, so kind of that real squishy Beatles vibe. Um, super cool stuff. This is a really colored plug-in. You know, this is not something that, uh, maybe I'll pull up a session here in a minute and a, mi a different session and it's got some drums and stuff and we can play with a few of these. In fact, I think I'll just do that. Um, so uh, we'll save this little demo here. Let me open up. Um, so let's see what we got. So yeah, over here on the drums, you know, I had a couple of things that are some, you know, some quick demo stuff. Um, I'll just play you a minute of the song here so you can get a vibe for it. Um, you know, I'll start at verse. Don't you see the red light? Can't you see the red light? Stop, don't go. Stop, don't go. Stop, don't go. Don't you see the red light? Can't you see the red light? So, if we were to solo this drum loop, fairly basic kind of drum loop. So this is something I was doing at a store demo the other day, you know, uh, don't even know how it sounds, but so this is a SSL E-Series channel strip. And, uh, you know, for those of you familiar with the SSL E-Series console, it's made more hit records than virtually any other console in history. Um, and, uh, you know, it's got a very aggressive EQ section and compressor, and it's got a real punchy kind of sound. So let's see what we can do with this. So right off the bat, here, I'll take some of this out. So without the EQ in, so this is just flat running through the console. But with this, you know, I elected to make it just a hair brighter, um, maybe pull out a little bit, you know, 3K is a little bit nasally here, so I drop that out a little bit, and then, uh, you know, throw in some compression, you know, which is a lot right now, you know, you could back that off, and, but ultimately what I'm going to do with this is take this from a loop sample sound and try and make it more of a live drum kit sound, so as we do that, you know, I'm going to squeeze it with some compression, to start to get that mojo going, and then I'm gonna drop it into our Ocean Way Studios plugin, which is super cool. So, so as you hear, as I compress it a little bit, you know, that's gonna bring out some of the room of the kick drum naturally. So here's out in. Okay. And then with the Oceanway plugin, this plugin's super cool. So they literally went into Oceanway Studios and shot the room with impulse responses and then uh, various microphones and modeled all that so that we can essentially take a track that we recorded and put it in Oceanway Studios, um, which is pretty great. Because Oceanway costs about $2,500 a day to go record in. So um, definitely not for me. Um, anyway, so let's kick this on and we can show you what this does. So I've got this in remic mode, which essentially means it's not a wet dry reverb, 
it's going to take the entire sound and put it in the room and re-mic it, so to speak. So um, this is dry. Oh, come on. So put this in the room, and all of a sudden, we've got a totally different thing going. So you've got three different sets of mics here, which you, know, you can change up. Oh, that's kind of cool. And then you can change the distance, too. So farther from the kit. So that's kind of our close mic sound. Then we could add. OK, so we add those. You hear that those are out of phase because of the distance. So we've got phase flip on the channel. And then we can change that around as well. Different microphones are going to be in different pattern configurations as well. So we can kind of go through it and find the ones that we like best. Not too bad. And then for our distant pair, you know, some M50s. Check phase on that. No, it's better like this. And then it's got global equalization as well. It looks like I had turned down this low shelf here in my previous demo. So, and then, hey, why not? Let's juice it up some more. So, we've taken what was a fairly generic drum sample and then, um, you know, uh, we're able to go from this to this kind of vibe with like three plugins, you know. So anyway, you know, that's just a quick example of how dramatically you can change the sound of something with these plugins in just a matter of minutes. Um, you know, and we could we could look at all kinds of stuff. There's some really great, uh, you know. Let me see what else is going on in this mix. So this is pretty cool bass. You know, um, could maybe use a little compression. Uh, Mick Gazowski, I was watching some stuff that he does. He really likes this Silver LA2A plugin on bass. So let's see. Kind of even out the dynamics of the sound a little bit. And then sometimes bass, you know, bass can be tough to fit in a mix. Sometimes you actually need to add a little bit of just you know, on that channel by just compressing the snot out of it. Um, well, we could start with our loop here and just bring that up underneath some added mojo, you know. So that's without the parallel. That's with it, right? So, you know, so super cool, really colorful kind of plugins uh, that you can get going here. Um, literally hundreds of them, you know, DBX compression, dangerous EQ, uh, you know, the Empirical Labs Fatso, um, you know, literally all the hardware that you've seen on all these forums and websites and Spunky's website and, <laughs> you know, all of this stuff is available, uh, you know, as plugins. What's that? Yeah, Moog filters. I mean, there's crazy stuff. Another thing, you know, that, that's really awesome is, is the tape emulations. And you know we've got several different uh, tape decks, but you know this is our most entry-level tape plugin right here. And just by simply instantiating it, we 
we're getting more vibe, you know? Like, basically what this is is a, is the, a certain tape formula from the Studer uh, 800. And um, so, but again, with tape, you can do some really cool effects where you overdrive the tape, back off the output, you know? Listen to what that does to that drum set. See, it just brings some life into it, you know? So. And so Oxide Tape is one of the plugins where this one's actually very low hit on your DSP count. So we could run one of these on a bunch of channels without crushing the system. Um, you know, let's let's do that. Let's see how many we can run. Uh, <laughs> that's right. Um, I don't know if we'll get it on everything, but why don't we try and take it down through at least there. Let's just see what happens. Um, yeah. So we're at twenty percent DSP right now. Um, yeah, so we'll shift option and uh, add this to insert five on every channel. So let's see, oxide tape. Let's see how mad it gets. Look at that. Every channel in the mix, and we're only at 46% of the DSP. Now, granted, um, I am running 16 cores of UAD right now. Because we're in the mix, I've got an octo satellite, quad core processing in the interface, and quad core processing in the twin. So there's actually a lot of chips here. But at 46%, that really means that if I was to flip off both interfaces and just use this octo satellite, we'd still be able to do that, you know, because we're less than 50% across 16 chips. So, um, yeah, but this, you know, this should add some some mojo to the tracks right away. When you see that sign, you know to tread slow. Don't you keep on till you see the light that lets you go. Don't you see the red light? Can't you see the red light? Stop, don't go. Tape saturation is a subtle thing. Well, it can be dramatic if you overdrive it, but it's, you know, a lot of the vintage records that you hear, you know, that's what we're missing in the analog dom or in the in the digital domain is that glue that tape used to provide to the sound. And so, um, you know, having these kind of models is really cool. Um, we also can model the Studer, uh, you know, the Studer A800. Um, which is also super cool and probably a little more intensive. So let's see if it'll run all these. Yep. Uh, where am I at? Wow. Actually the same percentage of DSP even with the Studer. So cool trick with uh, Pro Tools that I use a lot that I can share with you guys. Um, Say we wanted to, we've got the Studer on all these tracks, right? And uh, we want to audition different tape formulas, right? To see how different tapes would sound across the mix on each channel. Well, so you could group all these channels that I had highlighted there. Uh, don't use globals, mix only. And then only run insert control and we'll call this tape group. Um, so now, if I go and change the input gain or the tape formula or the IPS on any of these, it's going to change it on all of them. So 
That way, effectively, we can audition different settings on the tape machine across the entire mix, just as though you had run a 24-track machine, you know, and changed out the tape on the machine itself. So this will be so. But there's a hazard in sight. Put your beamers on and keep your eyes open. See how much more bottom the 456 has? And when you see that sign, you know to press low. Don't you see the red light? Can't you see the red light? Stop, don't go. Stop, don't go. Stop, don't go. Don't you see the red light? Can't you see the red light? Stop, don't go. Stop, don't go. Stop, don't go. We've been on a journey for so long. No time to turn back now. The wheels keep rolling, rolling on. So that's no tape. Gonna make it somehow. Are you with me for the ride? Are you strapped in tight? Cause I know where we're headed, but we won't get there until you see that So anyway, you can do some cool stuff with the tape saturation as well. Um, and you can use that trick. I use that trick that I just showed you across vocal groups. You know, I might insert a compressor across a number of vocal groups and use the plug-in control grouping to affect each of those, you know, without having to run a subgroup or whatever. Because depending on how much horsepower you got in your system, sometimes it's faster to just, you know, instantiate four plugins instead of having to route a bus and all that stuff. So yes, sir. So when you build a UAD system, um, basically you can register up to six devices in a system. And um, what that does is uh, the way the plug-in authorizations work is they live on the devices themselves. So when you go to register your new satellite to your UA account, it's going to automatically drop those authorizations onto this box. So wherever you take this to whatever studio you go to, it doesn't even have to be your laptop those plugins are going to run because the authorizations are here. So, and I do that a lot. Like we just did a record in LA uh, this summer where, you know, I brought the twin and this laptop that you see here, um, you know, out to Los Angeles. And then m another product specialist from LA brought in a 24 channels of Apollo for me. And I was able to plug his Apollos into my system and, you know, his authorizations would run and my authorizations would run you know, on e each individual interface. Um, what it won't do is it won't cross interfaces. It's smart enough to know this plugin can only run on the channels that are on this interface, or this plugin can only run on the channels that are on this interface. So, um, you know, that's kind of UA's copy protection is essentially the interfaces are the dongle in our case. So, you know, but that allows you as the user to you know, take the interface anywhere you want to and work on anybody's computer that you want to because downloading and installing the UA software on any computer is literally like a two to three minute process. So you could walk into any studio in the world, plug in your interface, download the software, and your authorizations are going to run. No hassles, no challenge response, no iLocks, none of that. Because um, we were in a really cool vintage studio. Um, they had a lot of great analog outboard gear. You know, it was Rilo Kiley's studio. I don't know if you guys know that band, but, um, you know, uh, the bass player from Rilo Kiley has this incredible collection of instruments and gear. So we were able to go out there. But, you know, they had an old MCI console. Um, a lot of times I don't like to monitor through those old consoles because I'm getting coloration in my monitor path that I'm not going to have when I go to mix. And that's bit me in the ass before. Uh, where, you know, I'll be working on a nice Neve somewhere and I've got the whole mix laid out on the desk, but ultimately I'm going to mix it in the box at my house and I take it home, and what I was listening to at the studio is not the same as what I was getting. So with the Apollos, I'm able to go in, use all that fun stuff and that outboard, but I'm able to run my own monitoring, you know, to the speakers, my own talkback and cue mixing and stuff so that it's really more of the same system that I'm traveling with to every studio that way. And um, that's been, that's something I started doing before I even started working for Universal Audio. You know, that was 
that was one of the things that led me towards working with them is I was going, wow, this is really killer, you know, because we work out of a lot of different rooms, but every room has its own inconsistencies. You know, they've got their own software. There are some, some of the rooms are really dated and they're still stuck on Pro Tools 8, you know, and things like that. So yeah, a lot of different plugin titles. You know, you've got your DSP resources, both in satellite and in uh, the interfaces themselves. Um, and uh, yeah, some of the highlights, we just talked about them, you know, the uh, auto-tune real-time, uh, the SSL stuff is amazing. You know, these different AMP emulations that we keep putting out. Um, you know, UA releases between four and five plugins per quarter, usually is what I've seen in the last couple of years. You know, so there's new titles coming. You know, they're usually doing 15 to 20 new plugins a year. They're also really great about discounting their stuff. Um, there's sales all the time. You know, virtually every month there's going to be some sale on some plugins so that you can expand your system. Um, you know, the Thanksgiving's a big time, the Black Friday deal. Um, some of the plugins end up being as much as 60% off. So a lot of the plugins can be had for, you know, 99 bucks or sometimes even less. And, you know, again, when you're comparing that to hardware, which is essentially what this stuff is in all, you know, respect, is, you know, you're paying pennies on the dollar for this stuff. So, um, you know, 99 bucks can be expensive at times, but it's nothing compared to a $3,000 piece of rack gear, you know. Um, so it's been really great for me personally building my virtual studio over time as I kind of dissipated my analog rig. Um, so yeah, we talked about a lot of these, you know, these great com uh, stuff. And then last but not least is the actual hardware. Universal audio, you know, even though we've talked so much about virtual, um, some people really still like to put their hands on the, the gear. So right here in the top rack, we've got the LA610. Um, that's, an, that's a 610 tube preamp and an LA-2A optical compressor in one unit. Um, and so that's essentially a channel strip uh, that's a great classic channel strip, tubey, real colorful vibe. Um, you know, so they still make, uh, you know, what about 10 pieces of hardware or so. You've got your LA-2A compressor, your 1176s, um, you know, the, the two 610 mic pre, uh, the 6176, which is very similar to this box here, but it's an 1176 FET compressor instead of the Opto tube compressor on the other side. Um, and you've got your Solo 610 for your project studios if you just need like one nice little tube preamp for your desktop. Um, that's a great way to go. Uh, then you've got, this is a super cool box, you know, the 4710D. Um, this is a twin topology preamp. So what that means is you've got both a transistor-based preamp and a tube preamp in the same, each channel has that, and you've got a mix control. So you can blend between the tube sound and the, and the FET sound of the preamp or the transistor sound of the preamp, um, you know, and kind of get your own color going and your own drive going. So it's super cool. Um, it also has the 1176 style compression built into every channel. Uh, and then um, it's also got the, the D to A conversion. So for anybody that doesn't have an Apollo and had another interface that had light pipe inputs, this is a super cool front end for that. Um, they also make a mono version of that for desktop, you know, for a project studio. Um, that's a better picture where you can kind of see that transform, uh, the, you know, the transistor versus the tube preamp blend knob. And then it's got things like your high pass filtering, pad, um, you know, phase, all the stuff you need on a good preamp. And last but not least is the new product that's coming later this year. Uh, this is not released yet. It was first shown at Summer NAM. Um, this is for guitar players. Um, it's called Am Aux Amp Top Box. And this is made for guys that have really great uh, tube uh, heads or solid state heads that they love but they might live in an apartment and can't set up a raging Marshall stack to record. So this is basically a, um, you know, it's a load box essentially that also has DSP in it. And so what you do is you take the output from your uh, solid state or tube head into this load box. 
it's going to attenuate or completely eliminate the signal from the speaker itself. And then uh, we have our DSP modeling uh, in terms of the uh, speaker and mic emulation modeling built in. It's all controlled over a Wi-Fi app. So you can set up with your iPhone or iPad and sit there and audition hundreds of different mic and cab combinations still while using your favorite tube or solid state head to play through. And you could then crank that thing to levels that you couldn't otherwise tolerate, you know, if you were sitting in the room with it playing, certainly not an apartment or a bedroom project studio. And so it's going to have uh, analog and digital uh, outputs for recording. It's got a class A headphone amp on it. So if you want to practice, um, I was actually just talking to a band that has gone to doing what they call silent practice, where they are using an electronic drum sit set and uh, you know, they're a rock band or, a, or an Americana band, but when they do their rehearsal so that they can actually hear the parts they're playing, they're doing everything through software modeling and, um, you know, and the electronic drums and stuff. And so when I was talking to him about this, he got super excited because, he said, oh, man, I can use my, my amp head that I'm using on stage, you know, but, I, you know, I can, I can, you know, still do this silent practice kind of thing. So... Apparently, there's uh, a huge market for this that UA discovered kind of accidentally um, just recently when they were doing some of the AMP modeling for the Unison technology. You know, they had to they had to figure out how to model all this stuff to do it in the Apollo, and so they said, "Well, hey, we could further this development." And so they've put a ton of work into the models that are going to run on this. Uh, this thing won best in show at the Summer NAM. And, um, you know, everything I've heard about it so far, we should expect it to be a super cool product. And that'll be out later this year, um, sometime before the end of the year, uh, is what they're telling me. We also have a thing now where we have uh, taken uh, our plugins and we have SoftTube Console 1 as a uh, control surface for our plugins now, which is really cool. So. Um, yeah, there are, and there are other manufacturers that are, uh, you know, probably going to come on board over time because, you know, it's, uh, it's such a unique platform in offloading the DSP. And, you know, it's, it's far more widely adapted than, say, your Pro Tools HDX. You know, that's a very specific DSP. It's a very expensive system to get into. Most people cannot get into an HDX system. And there's very few plug-in titles for it you know, relatively speaking. So, yeah. Um, any other questions? <laughs>